everybody. Um, so, kind of, where's the world shifting to? What's next? There's a revolution going on. I don't know if you've noticed, but millions of people have been protesting around the world. They've been in Egypt, in Syria, in Greece, Italy, Portugal, Spain, England, America, Brazil, and South Africa. It's kind of being fueled by social inequality and this increasing access to the internet. And we're getting this information from this internet. It's kind of spreading around. But some of this information is not really wanted, that we shouldn't really get, be getting it by our governments. So there seems to be this schism between the government should and us, because it's supposed to be for the people, by the people, but this gap keeps getting wider and wider and wider. These guys are now enemies of the state for bringing us information that really benefits all of us. So I've got a new paradigm. I call this paradigm everyoneism. And I believe that that's where we're heading as a society all around the world, where you get honored and respected for the contribution you make, for your participation, for your credibility, where that participation might give you access to more income. That credibility might get you slightly more votes. So to change, we have to actually admit that something's wrong. Luckily, I think we really have. So what are the trends today? Well, we have democracy. And I don't really think it's that silver bullet that we all thought it was meant to be. You know, it was developed thousands of years ago for the Greeks, and it wasn't for everyone. It was just for the Senate. But today we have one man, one vote. And you know, it works off the lowest common denominator. So we've got this great ideas that come to the surface that sometimes really don't make it there, because big governments are kind of being fueled by companies, and they really do what they want. And it's kind of we've lost our way as a democracy. The kind of democracy seems to have been sold out, because it doesn't really matter what political party is out there, because these big corporations are going to fund hundreds of millions of dollars to make sure that legislation either stays the same, or it's new legislation comes in that they can get extra profit. And if these political parties don't like it, well, they'll go and fund the next one. So we kind of have the sold out democracy. So I believe some people should have more of the vote. These guys, definitely, I'd give them my vote. And why? Because they're really more credible. And I think if we did that, we might shift this vote. We might get some legislation that actually works for everyone and benefits everyone. So this change in governance will only happen when we really change the driver, and that's capitalism. So what is capitalism, and is it really working for us? Well, we have more, pe more people living on the streets. We've got poor people everywhere. We've got you know, people living in depression, living on you know, antidepressants. We've got obesity as a worldwide problem. We've got the debt trap. Everybody's in the debt trap, even our governments, even our countries. And we've got this increasing gap between the rich and the poor. You know, that 10% of our population owns 90% of the wealth. 80% only owns 7% of the wealth. Since 2007 crash, 1% has 10 times their wealth, which just shows this complete schism is what's going on. So I remember learning something when I was a kid. It's kind of a weird formula that knowledge equals power and power equals money. And through money, you can maybe get some power, and through power, you can get some knowledge. So I think if we mess that around a little bit, maybe we can get a more just system. So if we change just two things, it can really make a big difference. So how we spread that knowledge and company law. So in company law, we have something kind of strange. We have companies are seen as separate entities in the eyes of the law. The directors are not held responsible for company actions. So the directors are there just to make sure that the company makes as much profit as possible for the sake of the shareholders. So you get companies doing things that aren't for our, all our benefit, that sometimes are illegal. And when they're caught, well, they pay a fine. But that fine is never as much as the profit they're making. So you'll end up with companies clearing the rainforest to you know, cattle to graze and more burgers. You'll get mining for natural resources and oil in all kinds of places, in the Arctic, and fracking in the Karoo. We're just going to land up with more and more man-made disasters. Look what happened in Nigeria and Delta. And then we have situations like what happened for the 2007 stock market crash, 
where companies took fictitious assets, like these bonds that were meaningless and worthless, and bundled it together and sold it off. And everything just collapsed around us. And we bailed it out. So we've got these real problems. But has anyone really been arrested for these actions? Has anyone gone to jail? Well, not a single person. So what happens if we make directors liable for the actions of a company? Well, companies become responsible for their actions. You get smaller companies and more of them. So you get more directors and you get more people employed. And you get, no longer get these large corporations that can actually spend hundreds of millions of dollars on manipulating governments. And you get maybe a distribution of wealth and potentially a more just system. So that's going to be really kind of a tough one to change. I'm not going to go and do that because I might get shot. So what can we change right now? Well, let's change the way we spread this knowledge. Because remember, knowledge equals power, and power gives us access to some money. So what is this knowledge, and how do we spread it around, and who has this knowledge? Well, we do. We, we create all knowledge, and we can actually spread this knowledge through six degrees of separation because we're all connected. So we can all spread our knowledge amongst each other. So I've gone and built a, a knowledge system, a knowledge sharing system. I call it my genie. And it's a content-filtered social network. Well, some of you will say, well, you know, there's social networks out there. There's Facebook, there's Twitter, there's LinkedIn. But what do they really bring us? Do they bring us knowledge, or do they bring us information overload? Well, I'm kind of tired with status updates, and, you know, you had a great night out, and you had a, you know, a bit blue today, and pictures of your last night with your friends, and... You know, in amongst this, there might be one or two pieces of knowledge, but it comes at us constantly. And there's a difference between information and knowledge. Information comes in one ear and out the other, and knowledge sits with you. You become responsible for it because it's when you want it. So you only really learn when you're interested. I know that's the only way I've learned. So this knowledge leads to responsibility, and that responsibility will actually make us change our worlds because we can't unlearn knowledge. So what's different about my genie? Well, my genie creates relationship to information. It turns all information into knowledge via personal interests and relevancy filters. So your information now comes at you and gets categorized into your specific interests, your personal interests. So you get to see what you're interested in and importantly, when you're interested. And then you can also filter that via relevancy. So I only want content from my tight friends, because that's highly relevant to me. Or I want content from all my friends. I want content from public and everyone. So it changes the way we process information. We kind of turn it now into knowledge. And then we also have contextualized search. So search also isn't new. I can go and do a Google search right now and get search for a restaurant and get 100 million, 200 million answers. But those results are kind of paid for. We've got SEO specialists and people paying for search. There's a whole industry on how to get your search results up the list. But 10 results from my friends is much more important to me than 100 million results from Google because those results are contextualized. It's relevant. I can judge them. I know what my friends like. So those answers are much more important to me. So we actually bring both of these to you on my genie. So this changes how we receive and process information turns it into knowledge. And then we all want to bring you into the value chain as well, because let's face it, Facebook's worth billions. Twitter, LinkedIn, all worth billions. But without you, they're worth nothing. And we are the value. So we need to bring us into this value process, into the value chain. So in my genie, we have own currency. We call it the wish. And this wish is earned when your content is loaded, when it's engaged with, how many views you get, how you participate, what you share, how you comment on other people. So it's how much you participate, how much you're worth as a knowledge sharer. And then you can take this wish and you can redeem it for goods and services, for experiences. And eventually, we're going to actually turn this wish into a real currency. So you become part of this value chain. So this is my attempt to bring everyoneism to the world. Because, because my genie for me is everyoneism, as all benefit according to their level of participation. So I'd like you all to become your own gurus, because we all are gurus. You're a guru of where to go shopping and what shirts to buy, and you're a guru of 
what, what restaurant to go to, and you're a guru of what music to listen to. We're all gurus in our crowd. So be that guru. Be a revolutionary. Share your knowledge. So join my genie, and everyone's invited. <laughs> so be loved for your contribution. To your friends, to society, be acknowledged, be rewarded. Take back your power. Let's change the world. Let's change it together. Thank you.